feel like if you if a question hadn't been asked, you you have a podcast and many platforms. One, you've been asked almost every question you can think of. But two, I feel like you would just get the information out if it hadn't been asked. Yeah, I mean, I would. I've got there's no shame in my game. Uh, yeah, I you have platforms to get your information. You I just can't think of one. I can't think of yeah. one that hasn't been asked that surprises me. It might pop in your head by the end of this episode. If not, I, I, I mean, I, I, again, you've been asked a million questions and you have platforms to get your information out if you want it out there. Sean Berkey says, if you were to start your own wrestling promotion, what current five, very specific number, five wrestlers would be your first to choose? If you started one today, we know it's not punk. <laughs> No, maybe it would be though. <laughs> just to get it cranking. Just, just to, just to we make him more, make him more miserable than he already is. We know it wouldn't have media scrums. No, we wouldn't have media scrums. I don't know, man. It's too hard to pick talent like that. I mean, right off the bat, I, I, and again, I've been saying this for a long time. I think MJF. I've been saying it for at least a year and a half or two years. I think MJF is going to, if he's not one of the best heels in the industry right now, he's going to be. Mm -hmm. um, just needs a little more time. And not because he needs to get better. He's already great. But the wrestling audience is a weird audience. You know, they're, they're incredibly loyal. I think more loyal than maybe even NASCAR fans or pro sports fans in some cases. But they're also very challenging in the sense that they don't accept you right away. No matter how good you are, you have to earn their respect. Mm -hmm. And it it's hard for anybody who's only been in the business for a year or two or three or four even to really get over with the audience. And if you, if you go back in time and you look at some of the biggest names in history uh, of wrestling over the last, let's just say 20 years, 25 years, there's only two people that have made it to the top that haven't been in the business for at least five or seven years. And that's Rock and Goldberg. And I think the reason that they were able to collapse that cycle or that trajectory is because wrestling was so freaking hot at the time that they essentially broke in. Mm -hmm. And because they had such exceptional charisma and they found their way with their characters and their personalities. And they were given the opportunity, obviously in, in Rock's case with, WWE and in Goldberg's case with WCW, they were given the opportunity to show showcase that special charisma and that talent at a time when the wrestling audience was at a fever pitch. I mean, you, you could have vomited in the ring and the vomit would get over at a certain point. Um, that's how hot wrestling was. So it made it easier for two people like Rock and Goldberg who are incredibly gifted in the case of rock, I mean, it sounds silly to even say he's gifted. I mean, it's just amazing. But I don't think either one of them would have had nearly the success they had had they made their debuts three years earlier. I just don't. They just It was a perfect storm. And it was their incredible personalities and talent combined with the peak of the wrestling industry at that point. And when perfect you, storm. Perfect storm. Perfect storm. Dominic Moses. So when, when, when you say pick five guys, you know, uh, MJF I'd pick, obviously. Um, I still think Dolph Ziggler is one of the most underrated, incredible, incredible. talents that's out there all the time. Making he does everything fortune. you want him to do perfectly. And he's just perfect. I think he's really versatile. I think he's got some depth. And, you know, given his amateur background, his believability, that's why I – Feel the way I feel his believability of the ring. He reminds me a little bit of Kurt Angle. I know they're not in the same category necessarily as amateur wrestlers, but um, just like Kurt has the ability or had the ability to go out and just be a legitimate man killing machine because of his credibility. Mm -hmm. And then on Tuesday night, he could do stand up with you. Yeah. 
he, he had so much range and he was so comfortable either being a stone cold killer and being taken seriously or being that fucking goof that was wearing that little baby cowboy hat. Like he was a character in toy <laughs> story backstage. Same with he Dolph. Went, he was, he was as comfortable doing either. And that's a real talent to have that kind of diversity in your character. And I think, I, I think Dolph Ziggler has that same quality about him. So I'd be, I'd be looking at MJF. I'd be looking at Dolph. Um, Tag team? What about a tag team? You need a tag team. In there. I fucking hate tag teams. I'm just not a tag team guy. <laughs> what about trios? <laughs> How to round out your top five? It's like, what were they thinking? We say, oh, we need another championship. We, we got every championship. We've got every title we can we can think of. Somebody break out a brownie. Let's come up with some ideas here. Come on, gummies all around. Let's come up with something because we need another title in in AEW. We don't have enough for God's sake. We need more. Let's right, see. We- Let's see. Let's come up with something. <laughs> oh, a trio title. Oh, okay. I've never heard of that one before. Let's do that. Next, they're going to have the Viano's Four title. That's what we're going to have. Go. Uh, what about it? Hey, what about? Uh, going, well, I don't want to. I'm not going to make you round out of five. But what about a? What about female? What about ladies? What's somebody that uh, you would? Hey, let's let's start with one. Start our ladies division, women's division. I like Becky Lynch a lot. Yeah, I like Becky a lot. I'm not a f- as much of a fan of the most recent version of Becky. I don't know why it's, it's a little too much glitz and glamor because to me, Becky's one of those. I hope she doesn't hear this because I, I I really respect her and I wouldn't want her to take this the wrong way, but she's like one of those women you'd, you'd have the misfortune of going into a bar or a nightclub and just getting a little too cute for your own good and she would just lay waste, to you. <laughs> like just totally thrash you verbally and then physically and make you feel like the smallest version of a man <laughs> walking the earth. Yeah. I like that in a woman. No, I could totally see. I think that's a good thing. That, that's her. I think, especially in wrestling, that's the kind of, that's the kind of lady you want. Is, she's like, hey, she's so she can real. put me in my damn place. She's so real yes. and just yeah. like, I believe her. And she's so good at working social media. I mean, that's when Becky first landed on my radar, it was about six or eight months before I actually went to work for WWE in 2019. So early in 2019 is when I first started going, Becky Lynch, what's up? Cause I didn't watch a lot of wrestling. You know, I was like, Becky Lynch, who's Becky Lynch. And I kept seeing her pop up on social media and her social media was like, right on the money. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're in the professional wrestling business today, if you're young, or even if you're not young and you've been in the business for a while and you're not really sure how to use social media to really get your character and your story over, just follow Becky Lynch, go back and look at the way she's used social media for the last several years. I think she's one of the best. Now I don't know if she's doing it herself or if she's hired somebody to do it for, but her social media is right on the money for her character and and what she's doing in the ring. One of the things that drives me nuts is when you see guys who are heels, you know, or women, you know, and on social media, you know, they're at the puppy pound, you know, adopting puppies, you know, or, you know, doing good things, which is all wonderful, but keep that shit to yourself. Don't expose (laughs) your own character. Now, social media is your, is, it's still an extension of your, whatever your character is. And if you're a professional, now look, if you're an actor, you know, or an actress where your audience kind of understands that the person in on screen is not the right. same person in real life, that's different. But wrestling is unique in that regard. Wrestling, even though it's no longer kayfabe and everybody knows what it is, if you want your character to succeed, You've got to go beyond what you do on television to make it work. And social media is a great opportunity if you know how to use it and you don't use it to undermine your own character. And I see that all the time, all the time. Fully agree. 